تصفو الحياة بنور هدى جمال الوجود بذكر الإله وتصفو الحياة بنور هدى وتطلب نفس الله Sometimes in life when it rains it pours the storm continues unabated into the evening, the day that Dada Rashid has his fall. Zinira is the only one of the Raja children who are at home, and although she is upset when she learns that her grandfather has been injured, she is overjoyed at having him and her aunt come to stay. Sara is at a friend's house working on an assignment, and Dayan is at Hiv's class at the masjid. Dada Rashid has had a cup of tea, and he is now fast asleep in the guest room. The rest of them are all sitting down for an early supper. Azzy, I'm so happy you're here. Will you sleep in my room? Of course, Z. As long as you keep it neat and tidy. You know how I hate messy spaces. Lol, don't worry. Azzy, mommy doesn't allow me to leave my room in a mess ever. Not even on the weekend. One day, you'll thank me for it. What have you been up to at school, Z? Oh, nothing much. Just the usual stuff. Oh, I almost forgot. I need a flute for music class. You do music, see? It's compulsory, Aziza. Do you have to do music at school? Uh, why didn't you tell me that Zanira is part of the music class? Yes, I could have written a letter to have excused from class. But I'm enjoying it. All of my friends take the class. Even if I had told you, Zaid, you're always so busy. You wouldn't have heard what I said. And if you write a letter, all the other kids will sideline Zanira. They'll make fun of her for not taking part in class. And then she won't have any friends. Don't worry, Z. I'll get the flute for you when I go to the mall tomorrow. But... Zinira, you know music is not allowed in Islam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said something to the effect. Two sounds are cursed in this world and the hereafter. The flute at the time of blessing and the sound of wailing during calamity. Aziza is dismayed that her niece has taken up music as a subject. Any school would excuse a child from the class on the basis of religious principles, but this name refuses to put in a request for Zinira to be excused. She is more worried about her daughter being ostracized by her classmates than she is about her being in an environment of sin. Aziza tries to advise her on the ill effects of music and musical instruments, but she is interrupted by the phone ringing. Hello? Assalamu alaikum, Brother Zaid. Waikum salam. Mulana Ismail? Not bad news, I hope. Unfortunately, it is. Uh, I'm so sorry to bother you at this time, but Dayan was not in class. The transport uncle is here to collect him, and I'm a bit worried that something might have happened. Is he at home by any chance? Oh no. Mulana, uh, he hasn't come home since school ended. We were all under the impression that he went straight to him. But if he's not with you, where can he be? Zaid, what's going on? Mulana, I'm going to try calling him. I'll get back to you. That was Mulana Isma. Dayan hasn't been to class today, Tess. What? But he's not home? Ya Allah, what if something terrible happened to him? Maybe he was kidnapped? Or maybe he, he met up in an accident? This Neem, calm down. I'm trying to get a hold of him on his cell phone. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone... Please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Any reply? Uh, no, it's going to voicemail. Hang on. I'm calling the transport uncle to find out if he did take the yarn to Madrasa. Hello? Uh, uncle Babu? I just wanted to know if you dropped the yarn off at Madrasa this afternoon. Oh? Hmm? Hmm? I see. Okay. No. Okay. No, G. Uh, I'll call you as soon as we find him, okay? What did the uncle say? He says he picked the yarn up immediately after school and dropped him off outside the masjid. So then why didn't he wait until the yarn went in? I told you not to employ that uncle for transport said. He doesn't even care about our son's safety. Ya Allah, my son's been kidnapped. Shh, mommy, we don't know that. 
Maybe the Ant Man's somewhere with his friends. But he went right up to the masjid. Tasneem, that's enough. You're getting us all panicked here. Just relax. I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to look for him. Where will you look, Zaid? Let me come with you. Me too! No, both of you stay here in case Dayan comes home. And Abba also needs care. I'll go past the school and then I'll stop at the masjid and see if anyone's seen him leaving the premises. Zaid gets up and hastily leaves the kitchen. He gets into his car and reverses out of the driveway, speeding down the road in the pouring rain to Rosewood High School. Aziza tries to pacify Tasneem, but to no avail. Tasneem has convinced herself that her son has been kidnapped, and the thought makes her inconsolably distraught. Aziza gives her a calming tablet, and she has to be taken upstairs to her bed to lie down. Be here for so long Cause one day we're going home We're going home We're going home We're going home While Aziza is settling the steam upstairs The front door opens And a wet and dripping Sara enters the house Her face streaked with makeup That has been partly washed off by the rain Zanira is still in the kitchen Clearing the table When her sister walks in Sara, you're soaking. Why are you wearing all of that makeup? Mummy said you were at Feria's house. I was. Shh. That's none of your business. Where's Mummy? She's upstairs with Azifoy. I'm so happy she and Dada came to stay. But Sara, something horrific has happened. Calm down, Z. Don't be so traumatic. Daddy called and told me what happened to Dada. Shame. Is he okay? I want to see him. It's not about Dada. Anyways, you can't see him right now. He's sleeping. No, Sara, it's much more than that. Tayan is gone missing. missing. What? No, impossible. That can't be true. I just saw him leaving for fifth class after school. It really is true. His Mulana called and told Jerry that he wasn't in class today. And Jerry called the transport uncle and he said that he had dropped Tayan off at Madresa. Oh, no. So if he didn't go to Madresa, where is he? Did you try calling his cell phone? We did, but it was going to voicemail. Mummy thinks he's been kidnapped. She was going hysterical, Sara. You should have seen her. As if we had to give her some calming pills and take her upstairs to her bed. Oh, my word. This is like a nightmare. Shouldn't we call the police? Or at least go out and search for him? Daddy's going to look for him. He said we should all just stay here and wait to hear from him. And he didn't want anyone to go with him because of the storm. It is a bad storm. Wait a sec. You know that guy for odd that Dayan hangs around with? He says stays in my class. Let me see if I can get his number from her and ask him if he saw Dayan. But first, I'll go up and check up on mummy. Sarah, you'd better wash that makeup off your face before you go up. The amount you're wearing, you look like you've just come back from a date. Sarah is surprised at her sister's astuteness. But there is no way that she can confide in Zinira that she was indeed out on another date with David. She feels slightly ashamed at all the lies she is having to tell, but the feelings that she has for him are growing, despite finding out that he is agnostic. Sarah still wants to spend every spare moment she has with him. As Zaid drives through the downpour in the darkness of the evening, barely able to see through his windscreen, his thoughts reverberate in his head and he makes a heartfelt dua for the yard. I can't believe Dayan is missing. This is all my fault. If I hadn't been working so hard, I would have been one dropping and fetching him from heaven. I told this name to keep calm, but I'm also deathly afraid that he might have been kidnapped. There have been so many cases recently. <sighs> that is really possible. And sometimes, days go by before the kidnappers call the family for a ransom. Oh, Ya Allah, let my son be safe. Let his life not be in danger. 
Let no harm come to him, Ya Allah, and let us find him soon. Zaid's train of thought is interrupted by his cell phone ringing. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Zaid, where are you? Any news on Dayan? I drove past the school in the hope that some kids might be hanging around. But it's all quiet there. The gates are all locked. So, where to now? It's almost Maghrib time, so I thought I'd stop at the masjid and check. Maybe someone saw him there when he left here this afternoon. I hope so, inshallah. Do you think we should call the police? Let's wait until I speak to the people at the masjid. How's this name, Azi? Alhamdulillah, she's calmed down. Sarah is home, so the girls are sitting with her. It's the first time I've ever seen her so frazzled. Normally, she's completely in control. Aziza, this is all my fault. If I had been around for my kids, none of this would be happening right now. Ah, oh, Zaid, don't be so hard on yourself. You're just working so that you can give them all a better life. Isn't that what this team wants? Yes, but it's not what I want, Azzi. Well, not anymore. Now that I've seen the impact it has on our lives, I was really happily living in Southville with my small salary. We didn't need that much money living there. Yeah, life is too fast-paced and I really can't keep up. And now it's Dayan. Dayan is missing. What if he really was kidnapped? Shh, make dua. We need to turn to Allah and ask Him for His help. You are right. I'm here at the Masjid Azi. I'll go in and see if anybody has seen the yarn. Zaid, it's Maghrib time and you are right there. Pray Salah first and then read two rakats asking for Allah's help. Then ask the people. We are taught to seek Allah's help through Salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Give glad tidings to those who go to the masjid frequently during hours of darkness, for they will have the perfect light on the day of judgment. Narrated by Ibn Majah. Zaid goes into the masjid and joins the Jamaat. He feels a sense of homecoming as he raises his hand in takbir. And suddenly he realizes that this is what he has been missing. Not Southwell. The sense of peace and tranquility that comes from praying five times a day in congregation. The feeling of being part of the wider community. The brotherliness that one can attain only in the masjid. And even though he has been consistent with his salah at the office and at home, he understands now that the only way to nourish his soul is to pray salah with jama'ah. He makes a firm intention to start attending masjid regularly. As soon as the imam makes salam, Zaid gets up to pray his sunnah and then takes Aziza's advice and prays two rak'at nafil salah, asking Allah to bring his son back home. He is deep in dua when he feels a tap on his shoulder. Brother Zay, Assalamu Alaikum. Alaikum Assalam, Mulana. Brother, I can see how worried you are. I was just about to call you when I happened to see you sitting here making dua. We might have a lead on Dayan. Uh, really? Did someone see him when he was dropped off this afternoon at the masjid? No, but one of the Musallis came up to me and says he saw a group of boys entering the church a few blocks away just before Maghrib Salah. A church? Ya Allah! How do you know Dayan was with them? We don't know for sure. But one of the boys fitted his description. Quick, tell me, where is this church? I need to go there right now and really see if it is Dayan. I'll come with you. Come on. I know the way. Jamal <laughs>